Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of the Library Marketing Show. I'm Angela Hirsch from superlibrarymarketing.com and I'm excited to share a viewer question with you today. This one comes from Jennifer at the Lexington County Public Library and she was curious about when she's finished doing her live virtual story times, where should she post those videos? What's the best place, particularly in light of fair use and copyright laws? So I wanted to dive into this a bit. One thing that um, Jennifer was curious about in particular was Facebook stories. She wondered if she could post um, her videos there to kind of help comply with fair use and copyright rules. Great question. The thing to keep in mind um, is that Facebook stories do disappear after 24 hours. She thought maybe the audience can be targeted in stories. It can't. Um, the other thing is your virtual story times are probably, what, 10 minutes long, maybe even longer in some cases. That is a huge video. I frankly am not sure that you can even post that big of a video to Facebook stories, and I don't think people will watch the whole thing. It would be a difficult viewing experience anyway because you have to keep tapping um, on the, well, sometimes you have to keep tapping on the screen to move forward in the story. So I just don't think Facebook or Instagram stories is the place for your pre-recorded virtual story time. So you might be like, well, what can I, where can I put it then? The answer kind of depends on, do you have a lot of resources at your library and where is your audience? Are they on Facebook or are they, are they on YouTube, which is kind of the other really popular place to put those videos. If you don't have a lot of resources, pick one or the other and pick the place where you know your audience is gonna see those videos. Um, one thing that I would tell you to help you get more views of your recorded videos after you're finished and they've been posted on Facebook or YouTube, or both if you have time, is to promote them by email. So send your card holders, and specifically if you have a target audience of card holders that you know are interested in story times, picture books, anything kids related, kids programming, send them an email to let them know that story time is posted. Maybe your library is doing a lot of virtual story times and you don't wanna be sending out an email every time you post one. So send an email every two weeks or once a month with a link to all of the videos. And you can say, here are the story times we did this month. Did you miss them? You can watch them here with your child. So that helps you to get some views on those particular um, story times. On Facebook, you can buy ads to help get more reach for your videos and those ads can be targeted, but you're gonna have to put some money behind them. So that's just something to consider. The other thing to, to consider is there are four that I know of. There are four publishers right now that have extended their fair use copyright through June 30th of 2021. And I'm gonna put down in the description of this video a link to two articles that kind of lay out every publisher has a different set of rules for how you can read their books and use them in videos. Penguin Random House, if you upload a virtual story time to YouTube, they want you to do it as an unlisted video, which means people searching for story time in YouTube will not be able to find your video. Now, you can share the link on your other platforms, like on your email and on your website, but they don't want people to, to be able to find the book by searching for it. So, and the deadline to all of this is June 30th. After June 30th, unless they extend it again, they're gonna want us to delete all of the videos that we've posted to Facebook and YouTube and whatever social media platforms you've posted to. So that's something to keep in mind and maybe start planning now, what are you going to do when we get to June 30th if they don't extend that deadline? Do you have any other suggestions for Jennifer? If you do, let me know in the comments. Um, did I miss anything? You can let me know in the comments as well. Thank you again for that question. If you wanna make a suggestion for a future episode of Super Library Marketing, you can just click on the Library Marketing Show. I'm sorry, if you wanna make a suggestion for Library Marketing Show on Super Library Marketing, just click on the Library Marketing Show tab. You can also nominate a library for kudos. And my kudos today goes to the Pottsboro Area Library. I'm gonna put a link in the show description for this. They are doing telehealth appointments at their library. So they have a phone number that their residents can call and make a appointment with the doctor to do telehealth. And then that resident can come to the library and use a special computer at the library to log on and have their telehealth um, appointment and it's private. And I just think it's a great way for libraries to help to bridge that digital divide 
provide a service that the community needs. We're always looking to try to help people that don't have internet access. And this is just another really great out of the box idea for helping to do that. So kudos to Pottsboro. They do a lot of amazing things. If you look at their website, they have a fantastic library of things as well. They're big on extending Wi-Fi to their community. So um, they're just one to watch. So kudos to you guys. That's all I have for today. If you haven't subscribed to the channel or shared a video in a while, please do so. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.